Hi everyone, we're going to check out how to do MIDI inputs and using the MX1 mixer and how to set that up in Ableton Live. So check it out. Well hi guys, quick video. This is for our midweek MIDI. Um, this time I thought we'd go through the MX1 and just have a quick look at how to set it up. You've probably seen an older video of mine if you know my channel and it's called the MX1 Ultimate Setup Guide. Check it out because this video will tell you how to use this Ableton Live MX1 template. So just a little bit of housekeeping. First thing is every single input from channel 1 to 17 and 18 for audio is here. But I've got no MIDI or anything set up at the moment. So that's what this video is about. First thing we need to do is make sure the MX1 MIDI settings are done properly. And what I want you to look at is on the actual just MX1 bit there. It needs to say on for the three track sync and remotes and then just click it on for all the MX1 settings there for the inputs and the output on for the three on the MX1 and then just on for track for the outputs there. All right, so there's the back of the MX1. So what you can see here is the black cable here going to the standard MIDI input and I've just represented Ableton there. So that means your PC or your Mac is connected to the MX1 via USB. Down below, this key step image just means MIDI controller. I've got the Roland A500 Pro. It doesn't really matter. It can have any MIDI controller, and I've just got that connected to the, the Mac as well. Right. Now, on the other side, on the back of the MX1 to the Aera USB host, I've got a Roland SE02, an SH01A, and a System 1. Okay. And via MIDI out, I'm going into a MIDI Solutions Quadra 3 box. And I've got a Korg mini log, a strike fat, and not in the diagram, but I've also got a Novation Peak. I think that's about it. Now, the audio inputs from these instruments go back into the MX1. The error host ports will send and receive, so bi-directional MIDI data. And the way I've got this set up with the MIDI out. It's just sending MIDI to these StrikeFet, MiniLog, and Novation Peak instruments. So it's not receiving MIDI from them. We could bring MIDI back in, uh, but we're not doing it for this particular setup. Okay, so nothing's been set up in Ableton yet. So let's set up a Roland A Pro as our in for our MIDI. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we can access our boutique instruments. So what have I got in port one? Uh, nothing on that channel. Okay. That is the SEO2. So what I could do is rename that channel SEO2. Now what I can do is I can record the note data on the MIDI track here and I can record the audio data. Let's rename that to SEO2 audio and then maybe if we're going to get really pedantic we can do that and if you really like things to be nice and neat you can actually put them together so that's the first one done the next one i'm going to do another error we want that to go to i think it's mx3 usb and channel one and that should be the sh01 Beautiful. While we've got the SH01A, I just wanted to show you that the USB to the air ports on the rolling gear is bi-directional, so it can actually receive MIDI. And that might be cool because you might actually have a sequence recorded on that boutique. So let's just have a quick look. If I receive MIDI from USB 3, okay, and we just don't have an output, I click on the arm thing here and I click record you can see that the SH01A is giving me MIDI data. So let's just stop that. That was probably just a four bar loop and we could now play that back to the SH01A. Press play. Now what we're going to need to do is turn off the sequencer. And just to show you that this is coming from Ableton, we can transpose it by one.
and then back down again. So that's pretty cool. You can actually record from bi-directional, both in and out, okay? And at the same time, I can also play live as well. All right, let's go through the MIDI port now and let's show how we can access these instruments, the Strike Fet and the MIDI Lock. So I'm just going to create another MIDI track here. We're going to come from the Roland and we're going to go to the, this time we just choose MX1. Now, this is where it gets tricky. If you look carefully with the red line here, I've said MX1 Mini Log 7 and MX1 Strike Fet 2. The 2 and the 7, I've just made a note of the device channel, so the MIDI channel. So I've set those up to listen on different channels. Now this is important if you're just using one MIDI. Okay, Strike Fet was channel 2. Let's see if we can hear the Strike Fet. Now that should be coming in on audio channel audio channel 2. Let's see if we get something. You sure do. And there's the Strike Fet. And now let's do the Korg Mini Log. Now that should be coming in on this channel. Beautiful. So now we're hearing the mini log. Let's just do the last one, which was the Novation Peak, coming from the Pro out to the MX1, and this time it's channel 14. Let's see what we get. You can see it coming in on the digital channel. Beautiful. And the last one is I've got the Ro uh, the Roland System 1 and going out to MX14 and we should get, you can see it coming through USB 4 there. So now you can see I've got audio MIDI, audio MIDI. And as we need them, we can arm them. So at the moment it's on the System 1. And then we'll turn that off, and then we'll go to the SH01A. And we'll then go to the SEO2. And now across to the peak. And mini log. And strike that. And there you have it guys, manipulating MIDI in Ableton through the MX1 to error devices through the error MIDI US ports and via the MIDI out port of the MX1. And I also showed you how to take MIDI data in. Remember that we did that clip there from the SH01A sequencer. There's a real basic setup of the MX1 and how to do MIDI in Ableton. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel. I've got plenty of videos on the MX1 and MIDI. But don't forget I do a Wednesday midweek MIDI session. And look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers. Bye.